Hello everyone, I am Dr. Rohit Solanki. Today we are going to discuss multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is a progressive neurodegenerative disorder. Multiple inflammatory demyelinating foci called as plaques. Etiology per se, generally it is said that pathology is unknown. It could be because of the autoimmune mediated demyelination. In autoimmune mediated demyelination, there is a crosstalk between the innate and adaptive immune system, in which dendritic cells functions as the antigen presenting cell. So basically, pro-inflammatory cytokines and T cells act as a inflammatory markers, macrophages and microglia activations play a critical role, which leads to demyelination. Environmental factors like Epstein-B virus and genetic factor like HLA plays the role. Now, multiple sclerosis location per se, this is supratentorial which is 90% cases and infratentorial which is 10% cases. In the case of the infratentorial, it is more common in the children. Deep cerebral or periventricular white matter involvement is there. Predilection for the callosoceptal interface. Perivenular extension or we call it as Downson's finger. Size and number, so it is a multiple, mostly small, 5 to 10 mm. Sometimes it could be to be effective, more than 2 cm size of the plaque could be there. In 30% of to be effective, uh, we will uh, see the lesion will be solitary. Uh, uh, per radiology per se, multiple sclerosis imaging on CT scan, there will be patchy or confluent hypodensity will be there. Mild moderate patchy would be there. So on CT scan, we will get only the patchy confluent hypodensities, mild moderate patchy ring enhancement. On MRI, it would be hypo intense on T1 weighted image with faint hyper intense ring around it. Very hyper intense center on T2 weighted image, hyper intense rim around it. It will uh, present ma mainly on the KLS or septal interface. Triangular on the sagittal scan, avoid perivenular on axial, subpile or intracortical lesions are common. Active plaque uh, enhances on the contrast, so it will be too effective or partial rim. Steroid on uh, treatment with steroids within 3 to 4 days, this enhancement will be suppressed. So, now we will discuss the multiple sclerosis clinical issues. So, demographically, it is more common in 20 to 40 years of age with female predominance. Presentation will be sensory or motor disturbances and optic neuritis will be the leading or the first symptom with which patient will be come to us. Clinical subtypes are there with radiological isolated syndrome. So in radiological isolated syndrome, there will be only radiological function, uh, symptom, uh, radiological base symptoms will be there, no clinical symptom. Next will be clinical isolated syndrome in which only clinical symptoms will be there, relapsing remitting MS or relapsing progressive MS. Relapsing progressive MS is also called as a secondary progressive or there will be a next is primary progressive MS. In the primary progressive MS, it will be primary cause and it will be progress. In, sec in relapsive progressive MS, once the disease relapse, then it will be progressive. Now, we will discuss the MR findings. So, this is the very first case in axial flare. This is the axial flare imaging a 30 year old woman with the intermittent vague symptoms of a numbness and a tingling in her face and hand shows multiple ovoid subcortical and a deep periventricular hyperintensity subcortical and periventricular hyperintensities which is perpendicular orientation to the lateral ventricle and this is called as the dow sun fingers a uh, Seafield, uh, this is the same scan, a Seafield scan of this patient uh, with flare in the same case shows the additional lesion in the corona radiata. This is additional hyperintensity and septal lesion in the cortical gram. So, uh, this is the flare imaging of the multiple sclerosis. Now, we will discuss the next sagittal flare imaging. Here we can appreciate there are several triangular shape. Here we can say this, this is the triangular shape, the uh, triangular shape hyperintensity at the Caleso septal interface and a dot and trace appearance. You can appreciate here there is a dot with no dot with no dot with no. 
it appears like a dot and dash appearance along the ventricles in the same case shows solitary wing enhancing lesion this is the solitary wing enhancing lesion the imaging appearance satisfy the revised mcdonald criteria we will discuss the revised mcdonald criteria in coming slides now this is the next case of the patient with axial t1 weighted image with 32 year male with a severe headache this is a t1 weighted image with a patient with a severe headache and viral prodrome so the multiple hypo intense lesion in the deep white matter these are the multiple hypo intense lesion in the deep white matter with matter with the faint rim of the t1 shortening here we can say that there is a rim of a faint rim on t1 weighted image around the hypo intense on flare in the same case shows the multiple round and ovoid hyperintensity this has multiple round and ovoid hyperintensity which is present in the same patient on the flare imaging which are the triangular shaped and perpendicular to the orientation this is the triangular shape and perpendicular to the ventricle lesion following the course of the deep medullary veins now this is the next sagittal rotated image sagittal image is flare in the same case demonstrate the triangular shape of the periventricular lesion this is the triangular shape of the periventricular lesion here we can say that uh, this lesion uh, with irregular rim enhancement on some but not all the lesion here we can say the irregular rim enhancement is there in some lesion and there is no rim enhancement in the other lesion so this is our uh, another case now we will discuss the next case In this case, there is a sagittal T1 weighted image in 19 year old woman with long extended MS. Shows the finding of the chronic burnout lesion. This is the chronic burnout lesions. This chronic burnout lesion. This is volume loss with the multiple hypointense ovoid and a triangular lesion in the deep periventricular white matter. Deep periventricular white matter. This is the ovoid or triangular shaped lesion. Axial imaging of the same patient in the T1 shows ill-defined hyperintense rim. Ill defined hyperintensity is there surrounding the plaques, giving the distinct lesion within a lesion appearance. So this is the lesion within a lesion appearance. So this is our one case with the lesion with the lesion appearance. Now we will discuss the next case. A flare shows the characteristic triangular configuration of a typical deep white matter MS. So here we can say the triangular configuration of typical deep white matter ms flux seen in the sagittal plane the broad base of the triangle are oriented toward the ventricle surface here we can see that broad base is toward the ventricle surface and with the apices pointing toward the cortex apices apices pointing toward the cortex or t2 shows the ovoid periventricular flux that are oriented perpendicular to the lateral ventricle these are the flux perpendicular to the lateral ventricle this is situated ms In next case, uh, there is a axial flare in a middle-aged patient with a multi-year history of the vague numbness and tingling. So, so few scattered periventricular white matter. Few scattered periventricular white matter. Hyperintensities. On axial flare in the same patient, so the additional lesion. Now, here we can appreciate that the additional lesions are there. Additional lesions present over here, with uh, extension and perpendicular orientation are highly suggestive of the MS. We will discuss the next case. Here we can appreciate that patient uh, presented two year history later with the acute exacerbation of the symptoms accompanied by the confusion and disorientation. Additional white matter lesions. Uh, additional. This is an additional lesion we can appreciate in this lesion. In this slide, lesions were this only. Next, there is additional increase in the number of the lesion, slightly less hyperintense rim are surrounding it. Less hyperintense rim is there. We can appreciate it. Show the multiple deep white matter lesions. Note the triangular shaped occipital lesion with the broad base at the ventricular surface, with the broad edge towards the ventricular surface. So the avoid a shaped lesion and surrounding medullary veins are present. So this is also indicating the case of the multiple sclerosis. Next. Uh, This is the with the contrast shows the more punctate and incomplete rim enhancement. This is the incomplete and punctate rim enhancement in some of the lesion. Rather, other lesion as normal. DWI shows the multiple foci of a diffusion restriction. 
region with the incomplete horseshoe a beam enhancement shows the diffuse restrictions in the periphery surrounding a non restrictive hypotenuse cone on a later biopsy we uh, concluded this case is a multiple sclerosis now we will discuss the macdonald criteria this macdonald criteria were discussed in 2010 later on in 2015 it has been revised so what is macdonald criteria says a dissemination in the space and in the time in case of space there will be either one or more t2 hypotenuse region will be there in at least two of the following areas periventricular gesta cortical infra trabecular and spinal cord in dissemination in time either new t2 or ganglionium enhanced lesion on follow up mr or simultaneous showing of asymptomatic bleed enhancing and the non enhancing lesion at the any time now we will discuss the revised criteria magnesium recommended modification to the 2008 macdonald criteria for the ma diagnosis it is indicating the dissemination in the space and dissemination in the time so it says more than 3 or 3 or more periventricular lesion will be there Addi additional cardinal location optic nerve to the cns area expand just a cortical location to the cortical or just a cortical use advanced imaging technique to visualize the cortical lesion we command whole spine cord Im imaging no distinction between the symptomatic versus asymptomatic mr lesion use same criteria for the primary progressive multiple sclerosis or relapse onset multiple sclerosis dissemination in time no changes needed no non enhancing black holes not useful for dissemination in time in adults may help to distinguish between the ms from the ab lesion so this is what we uh, discuss the multiple sclerosis now in just quickly we will discuss all the slides so uh, first we discuss that there is a multiple sclerosis is a progressive neurodegenerative disorder with a multiple inflammatory demyelinating foci called as pla so epstein barr virus hla demyelinating autoimmune disease and or it could be pathology could be unknown multiple sclerosis is supratentary deep cerebral predilection to the callus is a preinterface perivenular extension dawson finger size and number of the multiple mostly 5 to 10 mm it could be to safety more than 2 cm of size it is patchy hypotense on the ct on mr it will be hypo intense on t1 with faint hyper intense beam around it very hyper intense on t2 with less likely hyper intense rim active plaque enhances on the uh, contrast white steroid substances the 